So it is now that time of year again where NAFGO players are freaking out because who are they going to summon on next year when it comes to the 2020 gotchas that are coming to the NA version of the game? Well, don't worry. Your boy is going to give you that Clairvoyance EX, going to give you some insight into the banners, who you should be summoning on, who you should probably be avoiding, all that good stuff in today's video. But if you enjoy daily FGO content, make sure you click that like button and subscribe. It's free and it greatly helps out the channel. It shows your support, all that good stuff. If you want to further show your support, you can go down to the description down below where I'm affiliated by all means with LD Emulator and Loot Cakes. And no, before you ask, you do not get banned if you put your account on an emulator. But do keep in mind that if you're on an Android transferring to a Apple device or an Apple going to an Android device, you will lose all your Saint Court. So namely, LD Emulator is an Android emulator. So this really affects Apple people. If you're on an Apple device, do not transfer over. You will lose your Saint Courts. Only do it if you literally have no Saint Quartz in your account, right? Just, I don't want anybody to lose their Saint Quartz, right? I'm going to be upfront and honest. Don't do it, right? Like, I don't want you to lose, like, the 300 Saint Quartz you got saved up, bro. Like, I'm not trying to do that to you. So, that's a free way to support the channel. I'm back from vacation, so that means I'm going to be streaming every weekday on Twitch. That's down in the description down below as well. If you want more content, you can click that join button to become a channel member where there are channel member exclusive videos now. With all that being said, let's go ahead and just look at this year. I'm going to go over pretty much all the banners in short term, kind of just going over what I think are the banners to look out for, who are the highlight servants, all that good stuff. And I want to make sure that I'm very thorough. So we're going to kind of cover each banner in just semi detail. So first and foremost, we're going to have the new year banner, which this is a very strong start to the year. I'm not going to talk too much about Yang because I am probably going to be dropping a video on her in like a day or two and that'll probably be just more in depth than I could go into right now. Just know that she's pretty strong when it comes to boss fights. I mean, Serranos is widely regarded as one of the hardest boss fights in the game and Yang surprisingly does really well in that boss fight. She's like one of the servants that people really recommend bringing when you do want to fight Serrano, so she's very strong for that. Um, you have Chi Shi Huang over here who is like just the best solo servant in the game. Gilgamesh who's just a very strong generic AoE archer. Skahawk is very strong if you just need someone to output massive amounts of damage for one turn. And then you have Summer BB who enables all sorts of three turn nonsense with her third skill. And Summer Kiara, not Summer Kiara, but Kiara, just normal Kiara. We'll get to Summer Kiara later. But normal Kiara, if you can get her to NP2, is like one of the best boss killing servants in the entire game. Just keep in mind, if you're going to be going for Kiara, make sure you try to get her to NP2. It's going to be pretty expensive probably because... You know, trying to get a five star once is already hard enough on FGO. Trying to get it twice is a little more difficult. So do keep that in mind. But this is a very strong start to the year. Really, the only dud, I mean, the duds I would say for the banner are just like these three, really, like Shiki, Skahawk, and Gilgamesh. But even then, they're not bad. Like when those are the three worst servants on the banner, your banner is pretty good, right? Uh, then we have the Benny Enma event, which I've done a video on Benny Enma and Tamamo recently. Basically, if you want to buff up, the quality of art servants on your account this is not bad right here between both of these banners benny enma is a very strong single target art saber tamamu is a very strong art support type servant the only issue is that we will be getting two free to play five star tickets in the future which means like any of the non-limited well let me clarify any of the non-limited servants that are five stars that are not story locked for the first ticket will be available and then some of the story lock servants will be available on the second ticket so regardless tamamo is available on both of those so you can either summon for her now to free up your options for summoning on the five star ticket later so then you could get someone like i don't know napoleon or artemis if that really strikes your fancy or you could just wait to get her for the free to play five star ticket right uh lee schwinn is kind of like scott hawk in my eyes where i don't really value the servants that can output massive amounts of damage for one turn and then they fall off massively in turn two and three although they still are very useful servants that can output massive amounts of damage for one turn are very good for like just finishing off a boss fight right where you just had like your other team comp just kind of gruel down like two or three break bars and then this person just comes in and just absolutely obliterates them it makes them good as a finisher it's just i would rather use someone like say melusine who's going to be consistent for three turns than someone that's just going to be good for one turn but i do see some positives to someone like leashwin because his one turn damage is insanely high and if you think that's something you really need in your box you can go for him i just wouldn't 
really recommend going for this banner. If you're going to summon for the arts buffs for your account, I would go for this banner right here as it's much stronger. And even the four star Tomoe, as much as I love Tomoe, you guys know I have her grailed to 100 on my account. I kind of just see her as the single target version of Gilgamesh where she's just a generic hard hitting single target archer as Gilgamesh is a generic AoE hard hitting archer. Like they really just do damage. That's really about it. Then the next three banners you really do want to skip. I mean, Hime's really good as a support assassin. She's very interesting in that role and she's not bad. It's just you don't want to be wasting your quartz on Osaka Bahimi because she's not quite there to where she's competing to be as strong as some of the other support type servants and you're better off pouring into those other supports rather than Hime. And then, well, Cleopatra I think is very strong for boss fights, just not really worth summoning for. This is definitely bait because they know that you want to summon for Saber Altar because they're like, she's got the new outfit, really cute. You know you want it, but don't do it, all right? Do not fall for the bait. There are better banners to summon for this year. Do not get baited. Same thing for Bradamante. I know you guys see the booty shot for Bradamante and you're like, I gotta summon for this cute Knight of Charlemagne, but if you fall for it, I'm gonna bonk you, all right? You're not allowed to do it, all right? Do not fall for this banner as Bradamante and Shang Yu over here, as much as I want him to be really good, they're both like decent, but they need more to make them exceptional, right? Like they are just kind of lacking like one to two skill buffs before they become really good. And I don't really see it as worth just summoning for them as an investment. Wait to see what their buffs look like on JP and then maybe summon for them once they get their buffs, right? So if you really want them, just hold out a little bit. Again, you got to be smarter than the developers. You can't fall for every banner. By the way, for people that might say, oh, maybe we won't get this banner, do keep in mind that they typically find a way to force feed us every one of these banners. They miss a few banners here and there, but usually they find a way to deliver these banners back to us. The um, Arthur and Ozymandias banner that we just got, that was supposed to be for like some Camelot stage play, but instead they were like, oh, we're going to just remask this as like the winter celebration banner. So keep in mind, this might be like some, I don't know, end of January banner or something, or maybe they'll market it as the same thing. Basically, they'll probably find a way to force that banner back on us. Then we have probably like the next major release of the year. Now, people really lost their minds when Say came out because she's adorable, like, you know, the NP is pretty fantastic. Like, there's no way around it. I mean, people literally lost their minds when she came out and, like, wrote every, or not wrote, but drew every servant in her, like, NP pose. And for good reason. Like, she's adorable. And she's not bad. Like, she's not S tier material, I wouldn't say. But she's, like, a decent A tier servant, right? Because she's a strong AoE quick archer during the scotty meta and while her base damage isn't super high she has like a billion different damage mods that aren't the hardest to get off like in some of them like shadow servant are just really useful if you need to farm specific nodes especially like free quests and whatnot it makes her really useful for your account so she could be someone that you actually do put a few saint courts into if you're really interested in getting an aoe archer although if you've already got someone like adelante specifically for the quick meta you really don't need say but she is you know i understand people lost their mind when she came out so if you want to summon for say she is worth summoning for she's just not broken like i don't want you to think like oh, i'm gonna be getting the like the best most broken servant in the world that's not why people lost their minds for say they lost their minds because she's adorable right like let's let's just get that straight um then you have the Ereshkigal banner i would advise you to not summon on this banner just wait for Ereshkigal to get her buff because then we'll be in the Koyanskaya meta. She'll be a very relevant servant. Whereas right now, the Buster meta is kind of in the side, right? It's still a viable option, but with Quick kind of being dominant right now on NA and then Arts is coming up, Buster gets pushed to the side until Koyanskaya comes back and brings him into the forefront. So, you know, you kind of want to avoid Buster servants right now unless they're absolutely super broken because Quick and Arts are going to be the meta for a while until Koyanskaya comes out. And once Koyanskaya comes out, Ereshkigal gets her buff shortly after, and she becomes one of the better servants to use in that meta. So just wait for her then. I understand it's Ereshkigal. She's adorable. Everybody loves the blonde Rin face, but let's just relax and not get baited, right? Let's be smart. Let's save our quartz and not summon on this banner and summon on her later when she's more relevant as well. Like, it's just a smarter way to go about using your quartz. Then we have Odysseus, who... Honestly, I see him as like the counterpart to Europa as like Europa was a really strong AoE buster rider, 
Odysseus is a really strong arts AoE rider. The only issue is that as an arts AoE rider, he's directly competing with Rider Da Vinci, and there's just no way he's ever going to beat Rider Da Vinci unless they massively buff him up. So unless you just really like Odysseus, save your Saint Quartz for Rider Da Vinci. He, she's just a better AoE rider to go for. The Apocrypha banner, I mean, this is pretty much bait. <laughs> I mean, like... Shiro Amakusa is really good, especially after all of his buffs. I will not deny that. If you want to go for him, that's fine. But just know that, like, you do want to get him to, a, like, at least NP2 because he's held back by the fact that he's a ruler. So while he is really good, you might find that, like, he's a little disappointing at NP1 because he's a ruler and he doesn't really have type advantage against anyone. NP2 kind of fixes that a little bit. But this should really just only be seen as, like, the rerun for Saber Astolfo because he does come back on the rerun banner. So if you really wanted Saber Astolfo and you missed out on him, here's another chance to get him. But other than that, this is definitely like a skip banner because, you know, just don't go for like a lot of these other stuff. Or if you wanted Semiramis because I know she's also like limited as well. So, uh, you know, definitely go for that as well if that's what you're interested in. But the problem is that even as good as like a lot of some of these servants may be, Dioscuri and Romulus are next. And these are like probably the first major like must summon units of the year like these are like the guys i'm going to be pushing when they come out because the dioscuri twins basically have four cards that are hybrid arts and quick cards and they're absolutely broken they are probably one of the best single target art servants in the entire game they are stupid dummy good and then romulus as i was just saying i was like well, I don't know, like Buster's kind of in the background right now. Well, Romulus comes in and says, who cares? I'm the Roman man and I'm just going to obliterate everybody with anti-Roman, you know, nonsense. And I'm going to allow just all sorts of disgusting team strategies like the Boudicca Siegfried Romulus team strat where you unironically do a couple million damage without event damage bonus. So, yeah, like... You don't want to summon for people like Europa who are or like Ereshkigal who aren't like super relevant until Kalyanskaya comes out, but Romulus just doesn't care. Romulus is just broken and he, does, he just doesn't give a flip about any of that. So this is definitely one of the major banners you want to hit this year. Like this is definitely a target for a lot of people. This will improve your box a lot. And then we have the 20 million downloads. Um, I can understand people kind of hitting this banner. If you miss Gilgamesh and Skahawk and you like really wanted them for your account, Here's another chance to get them but really like as much as like of a jolt or sim that i am you guys know this you could get away with skipping this banner as good as a lot of these servants are like musashi's good ishtar's really good and you know jolter those are probably the three targets right i would say and then everyone else is you know pretty decent um you could get away with skipping this banner so unless this is really like unless one of these servants is like absolutely one of your favorites you could get away with skipping it because you guys got to understand that um absolute meta changer does come out in like a couple months after this so that's why i'm saying you can kind of get away with skipping this same thing for this like you know mao nobu is fun to use okita altar is kind of mid you can kind of just skip out on the banner he may comes back but again same reasons you can kind of skip out on it voyager is good and unless you're missing out on like edmund dantes or lancelot for your quick teams you don't really need to summon for voyager but he is a very good replacement for edmund dantes but he does not hit as hard so because his attack stat is lower so make sure you actually get higher np copies it's the same thing as like dante's you want to get higher copies so you can actually do damage it's more of like a rider mordred problem where you need the higher np copies not necessarily because he can loop because he has like a big fat battery he doesn't really need the looping it's just so he can actually destroy whoever he's fighting you know uh, then we have the summer rerun the main target here would be Berserker Musashi, especially if you missed out on Space Ishtar, and especially because Castoria comes out in a few months, and getting Berserker Musashi could be a very helpful piece in your ability to basically arts farm whatever you want. So again, after Dioscuri, especially Dioscuri, because that would basically be like a really strong single target art servant to get for the Castoria meta, this is probably a bit more important. If you wanted to just skip everything until June 6th, try to get berserker musashi then skip everything to castoria that is a very viable strategy i would definitely recommend doing that because really everybody else for this summer event is they're like nice like you know ruler artoria is nice okita's cute you know Hime's nice carmilla is nice but musashi is going to be the target because she's going to be the one that's going to be really strong in the next meta this is definitely a skip aside from range like 
range is good this is when she gets her 50 percent battery skill like we're not 50 percent battery but the ability to give 50 percent to one ally but that just does not compete with the power of castoria you're not going to summon for rider waiver over being able to summon for castoria because any summon you do on this banner is a summon you can't do for castoria and you want to give yourself the best possible odds for castoria this is a major skip this is literally just the maximum bait banner do not fall for it do not get jabated by this it's literally a waste of your saying courts right it's just a big nothing banner don't do that if you're gonna summon for something if you absolutely have the itch to summon you can summon for comma right here but this is kind of like a last ditch effort right right here to try to get you to summon before the anniversary they throw out melt king protea and comma three very uh, like powerful and popular characters as well as kiara before the anniversary if you can absolutely do it i would highly advise you to be strong and hold out and not summon on this banner because castoria is right here like this is like this is where things get a little stressful because castoria changes the meta in a big way because she becomes far and away the strongest support type servant in the game and even with you know um koyanskaya being out koyanskaya is very like similar to scotty in that you want to have a very strong box to buster loop like having like a maximum broken k scope makes things a lot easier very similar to like scotty right where you don't need a maximum broken scope or even a normal scope to farm with scotty uh plus the append skills you don't need it but it's highly advised that you do whereas castoria is just like i'll just get you to 100 percent and you'll just loop everything it doesn't even matter so it's highly advised that you kind of just skip out on a lot of that until castoria and honestly if I was to give any major piece of advice, I would say skip everything until Castoria comes out. That is like obviously your best play to make. If you must summon, you can summon for like Berserker Musashi because she'll be very, very strong in the arts meta. She loops very well. It, like speaking from personal experience, using a Berserker Musashi with one Castoria on the JP version of the game, you know, because I don't own Berserker Musashi, so I have to bring a friend to test it out. And even with me bringing a friend berserker musashi having my castoria and then like a waiver to farm she does it absolutely fine like imagine what you could do with like one castoria a paracelsus and a sclepius just anybody else to, or a nero bride to simulate that second castoria she does super well but i just wanted to see you know the waiver castoria setup and she does absolutely fine in that double castoria is insanely like broken for that character so this is the major thing you want to hit in the year and again, here is Ryder Da Vinci. She comes on the banner as well. So like, even if you wanted Odysseus, you could try to get both of them, right? And then if you can get both of them, it's just absolutely a wrap because you have like one of the best loopers in the game and the best support type servant in the game. Then you can kind of just hit whatever you want as the year goes on. Now things become a lot more relaxed because Castoria has come out. The major highlight servant of the year is out. You can kind of relax. So we move into summer, right? In Summer, well, I wouldn't say any Servant here is really worth summoning for. Summer Kiara is definitely pretty strong to go for. She's really the main highlight here. If you want to get Summer Kiara after you got, say, Castoria over here, and you're like, oh, I would like just a strong extra class Servant to kind of be able to use with Castoria. Like, I would like, you know, just this good Servant. That's absolutely fine. Like, well, I don't think, Cast uh, not Castoria, but well, Summer Kiara, I don't think that she's like an S tier servant. I think she's like an A plus servant. Like she's definitely really strong. Just waiting for her to maybe get one buff, one little tweak here or there to kind of just take her up to that perfection tier. So definitely like a decent banner. You could summon or skip on just depending on your preferences for Kiara. Chi uh, Chi Huang comes back and you could go ahead and get him again. Best solo servant in the game. Uh, this is definitely a skip there's no reason to really summon for this banner um again this is one where they're gonna try to get you with skahawk they're gonna be like hey man we gave her a bunny outfit summon for skahawk we don't care if she's just a really good pump and dump servant she's got the bunny suit so honestly if you want to summon for her for the bunny suit now that castoria has come out go ahead i would not advise it at all i would advise you to save for another servant like <clears throat> himiko down here as Himiko is basically, she's literally like, what if Koyanskaya was only here to make you do maximum damage and not Buster Loop, right? So she sacrifices the ability to like give your party like 
giga amounts of NP to give them giga amounts of damage, which is what Buster Servants want to do. She's kind of like the prototype for what Castori would be, not Castori, but Koyan Sky would be for the Buster meta. So I would honestly advise you to skip a lot of that just to go for Himiko, because Himiko is definitely very, very broken. You could go for her. And then really, I guess Van Gogh is the next target that you could go for. If you missed out on Yang, she has another chance to come back here. Here's Saber Astolfo again with his rerun if you missed him uh, this year or for the APOC run. But I would definitely say that you want to go from like, if you want to be optimal, you go Castorium, you go Himiko, where'd you, where'd you go? Himi Himiko, and then Van Gogh down here because that pretty much gives you a strong art, buster, and quick support type servant because... Van Gogh and Himiko are kind of like the alternates to the main support type servants. Like Van Gogh's the alternative to Scotty, where she does way more damage instead of giving them battery. And Himiko does the same thing for Koya and Skaya. They're definitely really, really strong alternatives to go for. And then, I mean, end of the year is pretty chill. You can choose to summon on a lot of these banners or not. Like, do you really like Ibuki Doji? You can summon for her. She's a strong AoE Buster Saber, but if you don't want to summon for her, maybe you want to get her later. That's totally fine as well. Doman is very good. Do you want him? Do you not want him? Your choice, right? Like, he's definitely good for your box. Very strong uh, AoE, you know, quick alter ego uh, with, like, just massive damage for chaotic evil people. Do you want him? Yes. Then summon. If you don't, then don't summon, right? Like, the end of the year is very mellow for these people, right? Like, do you want Vitra? I wouldn't recommend summoning for her, but if you want her, feel free to go ahead. Just know that, like, these three here, like, major art support, major buster support, and then major quick support, those are my main targets for the year, and they're all very close at the end. And especially, like, you want to kind of be as careful with your courts as possible when it comes to the, the beginning of the year but that's basically the best i can do for you guys you know i can only give you the information you gotta take that information and do something with it you know what i'm saying i know that's an obvious statement but you know i can only tell you what i recommend for you to summon on if you just tell me like hey buddy i ain't gonna listen to a lick of what you just said then i mean i at least tried my best but with all that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.